All right, hi everybody. It's time to take off the kids the kids gloves with the the Watchtower Society. I'm going to I'm going to get right to the point. I'm not going to be over here wasting too much time. I have with me in my possession. And by the way, my name is Angelo Quinones and I'm over here uh taking off the boxing gloves. I'm going to be using uh I'm going to be using the spiritual weapons that God has given me. For our, you know, our warfare is not carnal. Our, our you know, our weapons are not carnal. So I'm not, I'm going to get I'm going to be getting right to the point. I have in my possession the 1950 and I have to, you know, touch this with delicate hands because this thing might fall apart at any minute. I have in my possession the 1950 right new world translation of the jehovah witnesses now the first one came out in 1950 1950 1950 and i have it and the reason why i have it is because they didn't change they couldn't change anything in it that is the first one and uh, that's the first one in existence so this is the new world, and I'm and I'm uh, reading from the first page that says anything substantial. Over here it says, "New World Translation of the Christian Greek Scriptures, rendered from the original languages." What a joke! The original languages by the New World Bible Translation Committee. And the year is A.D. 1950. 1950. 1950 says over here, it says, and they even give a quotation of a Bible verse. This is the quotation that they have on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the title page. Quote, it says, but there are new heavens and a new earth that we are awaiting according to his promise. It says, and in, and in these righteousness is to dwell, end quote. And that's from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 13. They love so much the Bible, they even quote it, you know. You have to hand it to the Watchtower Society. Uh, it says over here, copyright 1950. It says by Watchtower Bible and Track Society. Check it out. It says over here, first edition, uh, eight, uh, 480,000 copies. Uh, second edition, uh, 750,000 copies, and then it says revised May, uh, 1, 1951. And, uh, says the publishers, the publishers, the famous publish, publishers are the Watchtower Bible and Track Society Incorporated. And it says International Bible uh, Students Association, Brooklyn, New York, USA. Maybe the Brooklyn Nets will have something better, you know, this year coming up. Made in the United States of America. Made in the good U.S. of A. Now, I'm going to be skipping the preface and all that stuff, and I'm going to get right down to the nitty-gritty. I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 1. Uh, verse 23, and you see how they uh, shot themselves in the foot, the Watchtower and Track Society, right? The Jehovah's Witnesses. And I'm telling you right now, I'm going to take off the kid gloves because I'm, listen, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to preach, uh, I'm going to preach the truth and love. However, there's a balance. There's a balance there. You know? It says, uh, uh, Paul the Apostle said in Ephesians chapter 6, beginning at verse 18 and 19, says, Pray for me, that utterance may be given me, that I may preach boldly the gospel, the mystery, the, you know, make known the mystery. Well, let me read it, actually. 
I mean, let me be fair to the Watchtower Tract Society. Because I actually open up the Bible and read it. So let's go to Ephesians chapter uh, 6. And uh, it's right here. It reminds me it's very important to find the place. Just like uh, chapter 4, Luke uh, says. You know, Jesus found a place. Well, you know, every student of the Word of God should find a place very quickly. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 says, Praying always, this is Paul speaking, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, capital S, not like, like the world, a New World Translation that has a small s, thinking that the Holy Spirit is some kind of a force. Even they have, uh, and I'll get to, to, I'll get to, uh, to that later. Uh, it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Verse 19, that was, that was verse 18 in chapter 6 of Ephesians. Verse 19, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. And uh, boldly there, you can use the word fearless in other translations. So I'm telling you right now, you know, with uh, especially me having the, the video, the video of uh, James White versus uh, Greg Stafford on, it already has 8,000 uh, viewers, and I thank all you guys for watching it. But I'm telling you right now, I'm going to take off the kid gloves. And I'm going to expose the New World Translation as the fraud that it is. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to be reading from page 37. All right? Page 37 of, uh, of Matthew's, uh, uh, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 23. Chapter 1, verse 33. And this is what it says. This is uh this is verse 23. And I'm um like I said before I'm going to be reading from uh from uh, page 37 of the New World Translation 1950 the first one in it, in it is existence that's what that is. Verse 23 chapter 1 of Matthew says this. It says uh look the virgin will will become pregnant and will give birth to a son and they will call his name check it out Emmanuel right which means when translated with us is God now in other and um, in good translations, right? I was gonna call it another good translation, but this is a distortion. This is what this is. This is what you know. The, the, meaning the the New Testament that they wrote in many passages, they distorted the truth. But I'm gonna be getting further to that. I'm on page 37, just in case some of you guys don't have the 1950 New World Translation. Is pointed out to the Jehovah Witnesses. Pointed out to them. Ask them, do you have the, 19, uh, the 1950 New World Translation, the first New World Translation that ever came out, that ever was published? Because this is, this is what it is. This is the first one ever, ever, E-V-E-R, ever, to come out. Out, out, out. And uh, they can't change it. Is in the history books. This is it. This is the first one, and they can change all the other ones they want to until they're blue in the face. They can change it. But I'm telling you right now, before I, I, I go into this text, if you are a Jehovah's Witness, do you know that you have been deceived by the Watchtower Society? You know, Ted Dencher, right? He was a top lieutenant uh, uh, for years. For years in the Watchtower Society, 
uh, Ted Dencher, and you can pick up his book on Amazon.com. He was a faithful lieutenant, a faithful servant of the Watchtower Society until he read um, The Jehovah of the Watchtower by Walter Martin, right? He read that book, he threw it on the ground. It was just like you guys, he threw it on the ground. Then something was bothering him because he read in that book, which I have, by the way, he read in that book that do you want to go to hell for somebody else's mistake or somebody misleading you? And that bothered him. That gripped him. Then he picked up that book, read it again several times. Then he contacted the, the, uh, the Watchtower Society, right? And then he asked them about such and such a verse and this and that. And any, any answers, he said, Ted, Ted Dencher. I need answers. And um, they said, well, look at such and such, and such of a passage, such and such a verse. I looked at such a, uh, such a verse, that Ted Dencher, and I'm not getting the satisfactory answer. Let me, let me have some help. Do you know they, they left them out to dry? They didn't help them. They didn't have any answers. So I'm just letting you know, you guys who are in the Watchtower Society, and even if you junior lieutenants, you know, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, taking out your little Luke Skywalker lifesavers, right? And defending the Watchtower to the hill, Jehovah Witnesses, so-called. And we have to get rid of that, by the way. We have to start calling these uh, so-called Jehovah Witnesses JWs. JWs. It is an absolute disgrace that they are called Jehovah's Witnesses. First of all, they're not Jehovah Witnesses. They're not Witnesses of Jehovah. They're not. N-O-T, not, not, not. They're not uh, the, the true Jehovah's Witnesses. So we should get rid of that. Don't even, when you, when you talk to them, don't even write Jehovah Witnesses or anything like that. You know? Um, so anyway, let me get to this, let me get to this verse over here. It's, it's in page 37 of the Watchtower, uh, a new uh, world translation of the Watchtower Society says over here, with us is God, pointed out to them that in the 1950 version, right, the first one ever to be born, their book says, with us is God. And you can uh, switch it around all you want because translations, faithful, good translations has it, God is with us. God is with us. But you can switch it around all you want, right? All you want. It calls Jesus in the 1950 New World Translation, page 37 on the top of the page. It says, with us is God calling Jesus God. Right? Calling Jesus God. And I am going to go very gingerly because these pages are like uh, held together with spit and glue. This is a 1950 book. So I'm going to go to Luke chapter 6 in the New World Translation. Okay? That's where I'm going to go. And uh, I'm going to go to... Uh, Luke chapter 6. I'm on Mark right now. And it's really good to kind of check the New World Translation to see what it says. And actually the original one. This is not, you know, this is not a, this is not a, late, uh, a late version from the 2000s or from the 90s or from the 80s. I mean, this is, this is the first one ever to be made. And uh, it's in many, many instances, it's an absolute disgrace. I challenge you, any of you Jehovah Witnesses out there, so-called Jehovah Witnesses, you know, and, and it's an absolute joke that you defend this, uh, this society that has deceived you. That's the thing. That has deceived you. Deceived. Now, you see on page, I'm gonna, I want to read this thing is on page this uh luke chapter 646 on in the new world translation of 1950 page 208 208 says this this is very interesting right here though and this is one of my favorite uh, favorite bible verses by the way 
But let's see how they that let's see how they render it. Verse forty six, chapter six of Luke says, "Quote in the uh, in the uh, N W T. Why then do you call me? Check this out. This is how they changed it, Master, Master, but do not do the things I say. First of all, first of all." The Greek word is kurios, okay? And everybody knows about that Greek word. Oh, they should know about that Greek word. That could that uh, could be translated Lord. In some occasions, it can be translated uh, Master. But you have to look at the context. And you have to look at the footnote. Check it out. Look at the footnote. If you have it, look at the footnote over here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the footnote. The footnote on the bottom of the <laughs> bottom of the page. Look how they're helping us out. I don't know who this guy was. Maybe he was a closet closet Christian, and maybe he wanted to help us out. But he sure he surely did. The one who did the footnotes for the New World Translation, you know, Watchtower and Track Society. He says on the footnote, check it out. Or Lord, in other words. When page 208 says, why then do you call me master, right? It says on the footnote, now if you guys are not familiar with footnotes, some of you, I mean probably all of you do, the footnotes are the, are the commentaries on, on the bottom, way on the bottom of the page. Now it says over here, capital or capital quote in quotations, it says or comma, Quotation mark, capital L, is not a small L, it's a capital, O-R-D, apostrophe, and then it says, um, gives you the quotation mark. So it gives you OR, capital O-R, comma, space, quotation mark, capital L, small O-R-D, up an uh, apostrophe and then a quotation mark look how it does they even admitted that master could be translated lord with a capital and that's on page 208 so why they didn't they didn't insert that if they know it could be translated right uh lord here why didn't they put it? Because they want to deceive you guys. You know, they want to deceive you. They instead of putting um, Lord as it should have been. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? Right. Well, then why? Look at any good translation. Look at the King James. Look at the NIV. Look at the NASB. Look at any good translation, and you'll see Lord, Lord there except for the society that wants to keep salvation hidden from you guys right you know the god of this world has blinded the minds you know so you won't believe i'm telling you right now you, they have deceived you and that's on page two uh 208 the pages are on the top 208 and on the bottom of the page again it says lord with a capital l or Lord. In other words, let me read it again. Verse 46, quote, from the uh, New World uh, Translation, 1950. Why then do you call me Master, Master? Let me go to page 209. The second Master is on page 209, meaning the second word, Master. But do not do the things I say. And that's a good question to the Watchtower Society. Right? You call him Master here. So if you call him Master, if you call him Jesus, if you're calling Jesus Master, why don't you do what he says? Why don't you believe that he is who he is? Why? Right? Are you making so much money, New World Translation, Track Society, whatever you call yourself? That you don't want to repent? Huh? Are you making uh, people around you uh, 
you know, twice a child of hell than you are? You know, you know what uh, Jesus spoke about in uh, Matthew chapter 23? Go read the whole chapter. So you see here that they say, or Lord in the footnote, that master could be translated Lord. It's right here and on the footnote. Right here. Okay, so that's well, that's another instance right over here that I really wanted to talk about. And it's, let's go to uh, page, and I think I remembered it. I have it in memory. 350 of the New World Translation. Let's check this out. This is very interesting right over here. Now, this is some interesting stuff. I mean, you guys who defend, you know, the Jehovah Witnesses and, and, and your way of life, meaning, you know, knocking down everything that uh, true Christianity is all about, and, and you're, you're in blindness yourself, you guys are in spiritual darkness, you know, you're, 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 you're fighting a losing battle. You're fighting a losing battle, I'm telling you right now, because you're not going to win. You know, there's people who are Jehovah Witnesses, and I'm going to be mentioning the dates later on, the dates uh, that you prophesied, you Jehovah, you so-called Jehovah Witnesses. You know, we have to get out of the habit of saying Jehovah Witnesses. It's a bad habit. That's a, that's a bad habit. Call you JWs, that's what you are. JWs. That's it. Nothing further than that. Nothing less, nothing more. Now, let's go to page 350 of the Gospel according to St. John. And let's see how they, right? Let's see how they translated the famous quotation by, uh, by Thomas. You know, a lot of people ridiculed Thomas. You know, he didn't believe in all that other stuff until, you know. But he gave one of the greatest quotations in the Bible. The whole of the Bible. So let's see what that dear brother has to say in the New, in the new World Translation. Check it out. New World Translation, if you have it, go to page 350. If you have the one that's, uh, that's uh, the original version and not a, not a revision or anything like that. You know, not that they, you know, not the one, not a one that, uh, that, uh, takes stuff out after it's been pointed out to them. You know, that's what those, these newer versions are. These new versions are, you know, the Jeho the so-called Jehovah Witnesses, scared rabbits as they are, you know, jumping around a little Easter bunnies and, and changing their versions every time a true Christian points out their mistakes. That's what the new versions are. Perversion of disgrace. That's what it is. And it says over here in three, uh, page 350 of the New World, uh, New World Translation. It says here, quote, this is Thomas speaking. This is what it is. Verse 28, page 350. Follow along, girls and boys. It says over here, quote, quote them to him. Read, write it down. I'm going to give you the way it says it says it in the New World Translation of 1950. Just write it down. And if you, if you can't, you know, write it down, then just put it, you know, slide the, the bar there to the left and, and, and write it until you have it. Or buy it for yourselves, 1950. New World Translation. Yes, yes, yes. This is what it says. Quote, verse 28. It says over here, in answer, Thomas said to him, then it has a colon after him, space, um, open quotation mark, my master and my God, apostrophe, close quotes. Look what it says, and this is, look at this, is rotten English, by the way. It says, it says over here, look at this, in answer, they don't even know how to write. Look at the new world, the, the famous New World Translation of the Greek Scriptures. It says in verse 20, they don't even know how to speak. They don't even know how to write English. You know, they would have failed in my college course, I'll tell you that. The one I had with uh, Professor So-and-so, she, she, was, she was something. She'll fail you in a, in a breath. 
You know, you know what I mean? She, she, this is rotten English, rotten to the core. Verse twenty. This is this is laughable. I mean, did did they go to school? Now I know that Charles Taze Russell, I think, completed a, a, you what a seven seven years of grade school. That's all he completed. At least he did a little bit more than Joseph Smith, that did about two. You know, he went to, at least to the second grade. You know, so, uh, you know, Joseph Smith and Charles Taze Russell combined didn't even complete high school. Combined. That's another topic. You know, Joseph Smith with the two months that he did and then Charles Taze Russell with the seven, seven, uh, I'm sorry, uh, what did I say? Uh, did I say uh, the two years that, that Joseph Smith did? And uh, and around six or seven years that uh, that Charles Taze Russell did, you, do you know they didn't even pass the ninth grade combined? <laughs> combined. Usually you get twenty four. You know uh, you get twenty four uh, twenty four grades combined with two people. Twenty four. You, you don't you don't even get you don't even get. Uh, let me see. One two. You know my mother my grandmother told me not to count with my fingers. Charles Taze Russell and Joseph Smith, founders of these cults. I mean, founders. People depend on Joseph Smith and Charles Taze Russell for your salvation. Because I don't care what you say if you're a JW. If you're a JW, you're trusting. Your foundation is Charles Taze Russell. T-A-Z-E. Russell. That's right. Like it or not, dispute it all you want. Your founder, if you're Jehovah w uh, 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 J.W., is Charles Taze Russell. And I'm going to get into that a little further on down the road. You know, let's walk the yellow brick road, everybody. Girls and boys, people. Let's check it out. Know well, what it is. Your foundation is, is a flimsy guy who lost a battle in court around the year 1913, four years before he... He passed on and saw Jehovah God, you know, sitting at the right hand of God, you know. Let's see what Charles Taze Russell is saying now in front of Jesus Christ, telling him that he's just a little puppet, you know, like you guys uh, make him out to be. Huh? So we're going to get into that, what Charles Taze Russell wrote and found it, which happened to be the birth of of what we call now the Jehovah's Witnesses. Let's just say it what it is. And if you don't know, either you don't you didn't go to college for you know any training, or you don't know history, you didn't check out these facts by yourself, you know, you don't need to go to college. You know, Christian school and stuff like that. You know, I was blessed I went, thank God. But not everybody has that opportunity. But if you don't have the opportunity to go, then check out the facts yourself. Anyway, let's get back to the verse. Page 350 of the New World Translation, girls and boys, says this, and quote it to them. Write it down and give it to them. These JWs are running around, you know, just trying to pollute everything. They tried, but uh, they, couldn't, they couldn't get away with it. Verse 28. In answer, Thomas said... To him, colon, space, open quotation mark, my master and my God. Apostrophe, uh, close quote. Look at that. Thomas called Jesus God in their translation of 1950, 5 0. Do you want me to spell it out? I mean, he's, I'm sorry, people. These kid gloves has to come off. Sometimes as Christians, we're too nice. We don't have a balance of, uh, you know, saying the truth in love. And I'm telling you, I, I don't need to do this. Do you know that there are so-called Jehovah Witnesses dying and go to hell every day? Every single day. Every single day there's a JW, uh, you know, uh, uh, dying in his sins. Being deceived, this is the thing, being deceived by the Watchtower Society, you know? It's one thing if they if they knew. Some of them blatantly know, especially the leaders, the one that are raking in all the dollar bills from you guys. And, 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 and you know, before I get to this verse again, do you know 
that the Watchtower Society has the control over you guys to such a degree, at least, at least in some um, sections, that if that's why there's so much suicide in the, in the, in the Watchtower Society and in the, Mor in the Mormon temples and stuff like that in Utah. There's suicide all over the place, especially by young kids. Why? Because they know that if they leech, leave the Watchtower Society, they know that they are going to be ostracized from their from their friends and from their families. The Watchtower Society has power in some cases to tell your family members not to speak to you anymore, not to talk to you anymore. That's what it is. And that's why some young kids, they, they commit suicide because they, they, they know the truth, they saw the truth, and they can't leave. You know, at least that's what they think anyway. And so there's suicide, go, you know, uh, uh, happening in a, in a Watchtower society, in the, in the, in the, um, in in in, uh, the, in the Mormon Church. I mean, to the hilt. I mean, that's what it is. I mean, it's a serious stuff. I mean, you know, you're being deceived. You're fighting a war for a person who's deceiving you. Uh, guys, let me speak to the guys first. Did you ever have a girlfriend that deceived you? That really broke your heart and just lied to your face. That said, you know something, I love you, and then he, and she ran around with somebody else. You know that's deceiving you. Did you ever? Did you ever go? Do you want to go through that again in a Watchtower society? In, in you know, in another sense, huh? You know, you want to you want to be in a Watchtower society in a, in a cult, right? In a cult, C U L T cult, right? You want to be in that knowing. Right now, because you know you're being deceived. If you didn't know that's something else, you're ignorant. But now you know you're being deceived and you're still in it. And you're still fighting for them. <laughs> that's, that's the thing that gets me. You know, check out um, the video. I bought the video by, um, and I'm going to get back to this first, uh, page 350 of the, of the New World Translation, which is, which is just, you know, with some of this stuff here is just a joke. I mean, it's just, if you know any Greek at all, any Greek, G-R-E-E-K, Greek, if you know anything about Greek, you know that they, they deceived you, you know? That's probably the reason why Greg Stafford is no longer a JW. He's no longer a JW. He's not. Because he know that guy knows the Greek. At least, you know, he knows it for the most part. Now, I know he's not a Christian. I know he has his own separate group. But I'm telling you, uh, sooner rather than later, I think he's going to become a Christian by the grace of God. Because I'm telling you, he thinks. See, that's the thing about Greg, Greg Stafford. At least he thinks. He has an open mind, even though he's, he's, he's dogmatic about things. You know, That's the thing I don't like about Greg. But I'm telling you right now, he's... Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Greg Stafford is fighting for the truth. I'm telling you right now, that's why I put his interview up there. That's why I put his interview up there. His interview is online, and I and I I disagree really with a lot of stuff that he has, but I wanted to be fair to you guys. That was part of the video, that interview. I don't know why they didn't interview James White, but that's another topic. But his interview is up there, and, and, and you guys are fighting for a lie if, if you don't get out of this stuff, by the grace of God. Now, over here, rotten English as it is, in answer, <laughs> that's a joke, in answer, Thomas said to him, that is Jesus, my master and my God. Now, I don't want to get too much in, into the, the word master, because... You know, the word and look at and look at the footnote. Look at I just looked at it right now. It it does it again. The JW supplied us the ammunition again. Look at the footnote. If you guys have the 1950 New World Translation, look at the footnote. Look at it. Black and white. You can't miss it. Black and white. It says in the foot the only footnote that this page has is under the letter A, the footnote. Tell them guys. Under the letter A, which is the only footnote down on this page in, in the 1950 version of it, it says capital O-R, comma, space, quotation mark, capital L-O-R-D, period, quote, uh, close quotation mark. I just wanted to spell it out so you guys could write it. It says, or Lord, in other words, they know, 
They know that master should have been translated Lord with a capital. And look, they don't even put small L O R D. They put a capital Lord. So let's let's uh, use what they uh, supplied, right? Let's use it. If you if you read with the footnote, it it should have been this. I'm not going to give you the quotation marks and stuff like that. I'll give it to you the last time so that way you guys could write it out if you don't happen to buy a copy of the New World Translation of the 1950. I'm just going to read it out. My Lord, according to the footnote, their footnote, by the way, the Watchtower and Track Society, right? My Lord and <laughs> my God. Uh, isn't that wonderful that the Jehovah Witnesses, um, if you put everything together, did the same translation as the King James, people. The same one and all other good versions. NIV, NASB, you could go down the line. That's about 480 translations of the Bible. If you count the Psalms and, you know, like a separate book of John and stuff like that, somebody count it. And, uh, that uh, that it, that it reaches up to a thousand five hundred translations of the Bible that we have. Most of it is in other languages, you know, Japanese, Chinese, Korean, uh, and of uh, the French Bible and the and the German Bible. You know, I mean, there's a lot of translations of the Bible. There's a lot of translations. But look at this stuff again, guys, girls and boys. Look at it. Look what you're defending here. Look what you're def you look, look what you're defending. Uh, a watchtower society that can't even speak English. Now, if there's somebody out there that can't speak English, I I have no problem with that. I'm not talking about you, beloved. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about a a a committee because they call themselves the you know a committee that did this stuff. You know, Fred Franz is one of the translators, so called anyway. Fred Franz, you know, uh, being the, one of the, the five uh, head honchos, right, that did this wonderful work. I mean, this is splendid. Look at this English. In answer. What kind of English is that? What, first grade? In answer? Are you kidding me? We're going to trust a translation that can't even speak, that can't even, you know, talk good English? You know, and this is a disgrace. In answer? Where do they get the diploma? What, in a bubblegum machine? I mean, <laughs> they didn't answer. Look at this disgrace. It's a disgrace. That's what it is. In answer, pointing out to them, in answer, Thomas. Thank God for Thomas. I'm telling you right now, thank God for Thomas. I'm telling you, thank God for Thomas. Thomas says here, guys... I'm going to read it again. This is lovely stuff. I mean, this is gourmet meal right here. I'm telling you, this is good stuff. In answer, Thomas said to him, meaning to Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, and, and the Alpha and Omega, and I'm going to get to that, the Alpha and Omega, guys. I'm going to get to that. This is only part one of this series. I'm telling you, this is going to be too long. This is only part one. This is delicious stuff. It says over here, it says, in answer, I mean, I, I can't stop chuckling. In answer, this is a disgrace. Disgrace to the English language, do you hear? In answer, Thomas said to him, my master and my God. Right? And putting the footnote in the, instead of, in, in, the, in the place of uh, the word, a master there, which they helped us out, like I said a hundred times. Put it in, insert it in. And you get my Lord with a capital L. My Lord and my God. And that's on page 350. 350 of the 1950 New World Translation pointed out to them. I'm gonna I'm gonna um read this again so you guys could write it out. If you can't get the 1950 New World Translations because it's not easy to get. You know? It's not easy to get this copy. It says over here, again, and I'm going to read uh, fluently so you guys could just copy everything and I'm going to give the quotation marks and everything again. 
Verse 28 of chapter 20 of John's Gospel says this, quote, In answer, Thomas said to him, colon, space, open quotation marks, my master and my God, apostrophe, and uh, close quotation mark after the apostrophe. In their own translation, or, or you know, whatever they call it, but this was translated right. Thank, thank you, uh, Watchtower Society. At least, you know, the part that says God. Master, I don't agree with. It should have been Lord. And they have that in a footnote. That's what they have. My master and my God. Thomas calling Jesus God. Are you defending that, JWs? Are you defending that, girls and boys? Are you still defending the Watchtower Society after hearing this? If you don't believe me, get a copy for yourself. The 1950 New World Translation is right there in black and white. It's right there, people. It's right there. I mean, listen, I care about you guys. You know, that's why I'm doing this. Uh, you, you guys are being deceived. You know, I have like about, I don't know how many comments it is on the board of the James White uh, versus Greg Stafford debate. I think I have like close to a thousand comments on that thing. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's about a thousand comments. This is important. This is this is an important topic issue. This is no joke. Your eternal destiny depends on you getting this right, and and maintaining yourselves in a society right that has lost the war already. The battle has been already won. Sings Keith Green. Get that tape or CD now. The battle has already been won. Jesus won the battle and the war. You know? He winning everything. That's what that is. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to point out that fact. I just wanted to point out that fact that, you know, that uh, Thomas calls Jesus Lord and God, if you put the footnote and, uh, and, and everything together, in uh, page 350 of the New World Translation, and that is scrumptious stuff. That is delicious stuff. I mean, I just that that I mean, it really warms my heart that the New World Translation Committee really wanted to put that in a footnote. That Jesus is Lord, you know, capital L, capital. That's what it is. All right, guys. Let's go, I want to go to Acts chapter 9, verse 5, okay? And I'm going to give you some information that maybe you guys don't know about. Let me turn to the, let me turn to Acts chapter 9 in uh, the New World Translation of 1950. I love pointing that out. They hate this. I, I'm telling you right now, um... They don't want you hearing as a as a faithful JW of the Kingdom Hall. I don't care what capacity you're in. If you're a leader, if you're just a, a guy, just a, you know, a regular student in the Kingdom Hall. You know, they don't want you to hear this stuff. I don't care what anybody says. You know, I know you're gonna fight to the hilt. You know, like the uh, like Saul did. Saul of Tarsus was fighting to the hilt. And uh, he was knocked on the ground, you know? So, I mean, this is, listen, people, I'm telling you right now, you better get it right. Because if you don't, then I'm telling you, the lake of fire is going to be your dwelling place where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. You know, and they could change it all they want, but uh, that's the reality of it, guys. Repent from your sins. And turn to Christ while it is yet day. Because like it or not, you're going to bow to him anyway. 
It says uh, in verse, uh, now you know the story about, you know, the uh, Saul of Tarsus, you know, um, on the Damascus road, you know, he was, he was, gonna, he was seeking further authority to persecute uh, Christians. And, uh, and so the thing is, he was stopped by, uh, by Jesus Christ on the road. And um, it says over here in their, in their translation, in, um, in uh, the 1950 New World Translation, it says this in verse 5, chapter 9. It says this. He said, and that's, that's Saul, Who art thou, sir? Now, and that's on page, let me give you the page number. Um, it's page 381. Who art thou, sir? Uh, let me find a place. It says over here, I got it. It says over here, verse 5. I mean, look at this disgrace. Look at it. it first of all, Saul is, is being stopped by a light that he's seeing from heaven, right? It, it, picture this, guys. You're walking down the street, okay? Look at the disgrace of this trans of this distortion. It's not even a translation. Um, not every word is it is a is a translation here, a literal translation. Look at this, guys. Saul of Tarsus is walking down the street. P picture picture yourself walking down the street, okay? Right in the middle of the day. Forget about the night. In the middle of the day, and you're walking down the street. Let me let me go on to let me actually let me let me go a couple of verses before you know before this. It says this in their translation in verse three. Now as he was on um, traveling, that's Saul. As he was traveling, he approached um, Damascus when suddenly a light. Check this out. This is this is the thing. A light from heaven. A light from heaven flashed around him, and he fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And this is the response of Saul. This is how ridiculous this response is. Now, remember... It says over here in verse in verse in verse um, in verse three, you got to remember this. Suddenly, a light from heaven flashed around him. I'm reading from the New World Translation, kids. I mean, flashed around him, right? Now, I probably can call you kids because I'm older than all of you. I am 48 years old, you know. I'm not a spring chicken. And uh, it says over here, I'm going to read it again. Let me just read the whole thing again. Verse 3, page 381, right? Now, as he was traveling, he approached Damascus. When suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. Look at that. He's seeing a light from heaven flash around him. And he fell, that is Saul, to the ground. As many of you uh, so-called Jehovah Witnesses will do. He fell to, you, to the ground. He fell. Right? Saul wanted to persecute the Christians and everything like that. And look, he fell fell to the ground that's what he did and he heard a voice now check this out he's seeing a light and he's hearing a voice from heaven heaven guys gentlemen huh ladies out there and he heard a voice so he saw a, a light and he heard a voice say to him saw saw why are you persecuting me? Why are you doing it? And it says over here in verse 5, He said, Saul said, 
Who are you, sir? Capital S. I don't care if it's a capital or not. This guy, Saul of Tarsus, is seeing a light from heaven, hearing a voice from heaven, and not even and not only hearing a voice and not only seeing a light, he was blinded. Blinded by the deity of deities. Little small deities. You know, the little gods that you have. Yeah, they're deities. They're fake deities. That's what they are. But you're seeing that he's calling him sir are you kidding you're walking down the street and you're seeing a light blind your eyes you're being blind for the first time in your whole life and you're hearing a voice from heaven perhaps for for the first time in your life and you're calling this 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 you're calling this god sir are you are you joking Right? Uh, y you know? So, in other words, to go on after he said, uh, you know, who are you, sir? And Jesus said, he said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. This is from the uh, New World Translation. Huh? Are you calling Jesus a sir? A sir? I thought that he was the Archangel Michael, according to you guys. So what are you going to call a, a... See, this is the contradiction of the New World Translation and the Watchtower Society and Kingdom of Teachings and all this stuff. You can't have it uh, both ways or three ways. You can't have it. It says over here that you call them sir. And then at the other side of your mouth and your teachings and your lectures... Making uh, children a twice hell, more, twice a child of hell more than you. The disgrace that your lectures are, you know. You know, I spoke to a Jehovah Witness recently. I I I spoke to Jehovah so called Jehovah Witness. I gotta get out of the habit. Y'all go, you know, J W. I spoke to a J W recently, right? And uh, I I asked her. I said, okay, what good news do you have for me? What is the good news that you have for me? If there's no, if there's, if there's annihilation, why I need your good news? Why do I need your good news if there's annihilation? Huh? Why not rip up all your little magazines and, and do whatever you want? There's annihilation. What's the big deal? You know? You know, it's appointed unto man once to die, and after that, you're annihilated. Oh, come on. Give me a break. I mean, no, I'm telling you, these kids, glo the kid gloves have to come off, guys. I mean, we're too nice to these people. We're too nice. We got to say that you have been deceived to your face. You have been deceived. It says over here, he said, I am Jesus. You know? I mean, responding to the sir. Do you think the Lord Jesus Christ would leave it like that? If, if that man, Saul of Tarsus, the persecutor that he was, would call Jesus from, uh, you know, call Jesus that, that was in heaven, sir? <laughs> Do you think he's going to respond in, in a nice uh, fashion? If Saul of Tarsus called him, sir? I don't care if it's a capital over here in page, uh, what is this page? Page 381 of New World Translation of 1950. I don't care if it says page. I, 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 not page, sir, with a capital. I don't care. I don't care if it says it. It's a distortion. Call Jesus, sir. And then you, in your teachings, you call him the Archangel Michael. So when was it? When I mean, this is, a, this, this is the thing. You guys, you're being deceived. You, you, you guys that are fighting a losing battle, you're being deceived to your face. They don't even do it hiding from you guys. You know? But let's check out. You know, let's check out. Uh, I mean, this is, too, I mean, this stuff, I'm telling you right now, this stuff is just ridiculous, guys. This, this, I mean, he, he sees a light from heaven blinding his eyes blinding his eyes became blind eh? that's who he became that's what he became I should say he became blind blind 
I mean, I gotta read this again. Let me read it so everybody could kind of like uh, maybe write it down if they don't have this. Uh, if they don't have this. Uh, this exclusive, you know, book here. You know, this is the first translation of the Jehovah Witnesses. You know, uh, of the New Testament. This is the first one, 1950. There's nothing before it. There's no 1949 or 48 or 47. This is the first one to can't to come out. Verse 3 again. Now, I'm just going to read it so you guys can copy it. Now, as he was traveling, he approached Damascus when suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him and he fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, Who are you, sir? He said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. And then comes verse 6. Are you kidding me, calling Jesus, sir? He's seeing this divine being from heaven and he's going to call him sir. See how they're tricking you guys? They don't want you they, you know they don't want you to hear that he's lord, king of king and lord of lords. Let's check out the Greek word, okay? That was page um 381. So I'm going to leave it here. Okay? I'm going to leave it here. And um, I'm going to go to the King James Version. And I'm going to go to several, several versions of the Bible. Okay? And I am going to read to you what they have to say. Let's go to the King James Version. Verse 5, chapter 9. Okay? And it's on page 1,377 in, in, in this particular copy uh, of the Bible, this particular version of the Bible, uh, the King James Version, this particular uh, writing. It says over here in verse 5, it says, And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. Whom thou persecuteth, right? So, look at this. Look at the difference. Who art thou, Lord, with a capital L, right? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. They don't have that, huh? They don't want you to see, and the Lord said. They took it away from you guys. They just robbed it away. It just robbed it away. Let's look. Let's let's look at another translation. Let's go to the New International Version, and just in case somebody kind of snaps at uh, new versions of the Bible and stuff like that, let me tell you something. The New International Version and uh, the NASB uh, and translations and good translations like that. I can go on and on and on. I can have you here to literally to a half an hour quoting uh, different translations. I'm going to mention some and I'm going to read from some. And the only thing I'm going to say is this. If somebody wants to hear me um, in my debate that I had uh, about the New King James Only Advocates, that's another topic. I'm not going to get into that because that's just too long. I already did it. If somebody wants to hear the debate or the closing statement I have separately, right, then just hear that or hear somebody else's debate on it. I'm not going to discuss it right here fully. The only thing I would say is this. The newer versions, for the most part, used older and more reliable texts of, of the original language, okay? So, so the thing in a language is, I should say. So the thing is that you know the NIV and other uh, versions of the Bible, the translators that is, 
Use a Codex Santiaticus. Use Codex Vanicatus. Use the Alexandria text. Use the Byzantine text, right? They use the older uh, reliable documents, you know, manuscripts. So the thing is that uh, you, you, you're fighting a losing battle in that, uh, in that thing also, so, but I'm not going to get into that. But that's the only thing I just want to say about that. But let's check out verse 5 in the New International Version. It says, Who are you, Lord? Capital L. Saul asked. Okay. I am Jesus whom you are uh, persecuting. So the thing is, look at it. Check it out. Who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord, with a capital L? Capital L. Not a small L. It, it, it doesn't say sir here. Who are you, sir? Uh, it's just a ridiculous um, thing to say to, to, uh, to a divine being from heaven to call him sir. You see how ridiculous the new uh, world translation is and the Watchtower Society really is? It's just a joke. You know, they're there to rake in all the money and stuff like that and to, you know, uh, and to lead people to hell. They don't care. They're, they're raking in all the bucks, you know. You know, that's what they do. They don't care about your eternal destiny. They don't care about their eternal destiny. They want their cake and they, they want to eat it too. That's what they want. Now, let's go to, let's go to the New Revised Standard Version. Okay, the New Revised Standard Version. Let's read it. It says over here in verse 5, Acts chapter 9, and, and after a couple of more, uh, well, actually, this is going to be the last one because time is, is kind of slipping away. I just want, I want to get into the Greek. Chapter 9, verse 5 of the Acts of the Apostles, he asked, he asked, Who are you, Lord? Capital L. Who are you, Lord? Okay? So, it says very clearly, verse 5, uh, he asked, that's Saul, Who are you, Lord, with a capital L? Okay? Capital L. So, I'm giving you different translations, okay? Um, and you can do this for yourself. I'm giving you different translations of the Bible, right? And everybody, except for the New World Translations, I wonder why, eh? All of them are saying, Lord, except for the New uh, World Translation that says, uh, uh, All of them are saying, Lord, except for the New World Translation that says, Sir. And I'm going to go to another translation right now. Let's go to the, the New Jerusalem Bible. Okay, the New Jerusalem Bible. And let's read um, verse 5 in the New Jerusalem Bible. And... Um, it says over here in verse 5, in the New Jerusalem um, Bible, uh, let me see, this is on page, this is on page 1,284, okay? Alright, so this is what we get, this is what we read here in verse 5. Of chapter 9 of Acts. It says, quote, Who are you, Lord? Capital L. Lord. Capital L. He asked, and the answer came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. And I like verse 6. Get up. And go into the city, and you will be told 
what you are to do. Huh? New marching orders. New marching orders, guys. Get up from the Watchtower Society. Get out. Get up. And you... It says over here, get up and go into the city and you will be told what you are to do. This is the Lord speaking. This is not a sir. That is a command of the living God telling Saul to get up. Okay? Get up. You already know who I am. You asked a question. Who are who are who are you, Lord? I told you who I am, so get up. Time to march. Get up. Up, 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 up. Now I'm gonna be reading the original Greek word. And I want you guys to share this with the JWs, okay? I'm gonna show you the original word that that Saul of uh, Tarsus used when he was addressing the Lord. I'm going to show you that. Now, it says here, okay, I am going to be um, reading this from a, a King James Greek interlinear. They uses the TR, okay? I have the Byzantine, but... The thing is that this has the Greek interlinear, so it has, um, for my audience, I want to read from this one. This is, so the thing is that, uh, that's why I'm using this one, because this is the Greek interlinear, and it has a good, is a very good inter, uh, Greek interlinear. So it says over here in verse 5, it says, and he, and I'm just going to be reading it from the translation that, uh, that reads from the Greek, okay? And then I'm going to get to the, the Greek word that Paul used. Or Saul, that is. So I'm gonna, it's not going to be making a lot of sense, but this is how it, it reads from the Greek text. Uh, and this is the English under the Greek. So if it doesn't make sense, it's not me not knowing how to read. It's just that that's how it reads in the Greek. So this is just a, a literal translation of the Greek here. It says verse 5. And he said, Who are thou... Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou, right? Whom thou persecuted. Now let me let me read a couple of interesting things here from the original Greek. Let me let me let me uh, let me let me uh, let me let me give you this information, okay? Now, I can read from the Byzantine that I have over here. I have one right near me, right? Manuscript. But, you know, um, I think for people who don't know uh, too much of Greek, that's not, that's not going to help them out. So I'm trying to grab a, a Greek interlinear or use a Greek interlinear that, that people could kind of grasp, okay? So um, I'm using this Greek interlinear. It says over here, this is very interesting. It says, and he said, who art, who art thou, Lord? Okay, capital L. Now, this is the Greek word for Lord, and this is very striking. Now, a lot of you probably know this fact, but you probably don't use it. That's the problem. It's not to know it. It's not to know the Greek. It's, no, it's to know how to use it correctly when you're confronted with a situation with a JW right in front of you. Now, Saul used the Greek word kurios, okay? In, in, in English, it's spelled K-U-R-I-O-S, okay? Now, uh, and, and I'm going to give you the spelling of that. Um, in Greek, but let me just let me just point out this fact. Okay, he uses the Greek word "kurios," which is the Greek equivalent. Check this out. It is the Greek equivalent to the Hebrew Yahweh or Jehovah. It's the Greek equivalent. That's why it's ridiculous to translate it "sir" when you're talking about Jesus. Okay, 
Now it can be translated uh, master sometimes and things like that, but it's according to the context. You don't speak to a divine being, right, that's flashing from heaven and speaking from heaven, you call him a sir. You don't do that. You know, you, you, you guys are being deceived. This is, this is what you're fighting for? Uh, a translation that doesn't even know how to speak correctly? I mean, th th this is the thing. So, he uses the Greek word kurios, K-U-R-I-O-S, and, and, and the King James translates it um, with a capital L correctly. And, um, and so, this is the Greek word that Paul used. This is the equivalent name in Greek for Jehovah. It's the, it, it's the equivalent to it. All the scholars are in agreement. Even the Watchtower Society are in agreement with it. They know this stuff. They're not, they're, it's not like they're dumb. They just don't want to admit it. And some people who fight for the Watchtower Society, they, they know that they're wrong. They don't want to admit that they're wrong. They don't, want to, they don't want to have to change their lives, you know? Ah, this is what it is. He used the Greek word um, kyrios, which means... Uh, which is the equivalent for Jehovah in the Greek, or Yahweh, if you will, and said uh, Jehovah's, and let me see, it says over here, uh, it says over here, who art thou, Kyrios, okay, or Jehovah, if you will, if you want to kind of, you know, because I want to make this clear for people who, who's not really understanding what I'm trying to say, um, so let me just read it again. And he, this is verse 5, chapter uh, uh, 9 in a Greek interlinear here. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? Said, I am Jesus, whom thou, whom thou, let me just read it again. Let me just read this again. And he said, Who art thou? Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. Now look at this. The word Kyrios in the Greek here appears twice, not only once, twice. Okay? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. In other words, and the Jehovah said, I am Jesus. Because Kyrios is the equivalent to, is the, is the equivalent in Greek to Jehovah. So this is striking, guys and girls out there. I mean, you, you ha we have to use this text and we don't use it. I didn't hear... Um, you know, I didn't hear uh, in the debate James using this argument. I don't think I heard it anyway. You know, I have to go back to it to kind of be fair. You know, um, and, and we should use this argument. Um, you know, what, what Saul uh, did. I mean, this is a, a great question. Who art thou, Lord? He knew it was some kind of a deity. It just made him blind for, for crying out loud. And it spoke to him from heaven. He's not going to call him sir. He's not going to call him, hey, you sir out there, you who made me blind. Who are you? He didn't, he didn't say that. He used the Greek word kyrios. Remember, Saul sat under the feet of Gamaliel. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He was a scribe. Okay? So, um, touching the law, he was blameless, he says in another place. You know? So, uh, at least he thought he was. Um, but he counted all that refuge and garbage, you know. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is that see how, um, how the Jehovah Witnesses, so-called, you know. It's hard to get out of that habit. I mean, I have to get out of that habit. They don't know Jehovah Witnesses, you know. JWs, that's what they are. JWs, people. Let's call them like that, what they are. They're JWs. Not Jehovah Witnesses. See how they're trying to hide this from you guys? If you try to, uh, you know, try to learn a little Greek for yourselves. 
don't take it as face value with the what the um what the uh what the Jehovah Witnesses so called are trying to do to you. Now look at this, verse three, and I'm gonna read now um, from uh, page three hundred and eighty-one, and let's see. Knowing all that stuff that you know, right? Knowing all that stuff that you know, let's read their translation and see how silly it is. It's almost to the point of being almost disgusting, really, to tell you the truth. How they could insult your your intelligence. And try to insult mine, you know, in Christ Jesus, you know. So, I mean, th th this is how it's going to sound. Now, let me go to verse 3 again. Now, this is uh, their rendering from the New World Translation, 1950, page 381. Now, th let's compare. We just heard the other translations. Let's check it out. Verse 3, now as he was traveling... He approached Damascus when suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him and he fell to the ground. And he heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, who are you, sir? He said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Huh? Nevertheless, rise and enter into the city, and I and and what you must do will be told you. Now, did Jesus reply? Huh? Did Jesus reply, Saul of Tarsus, when Saul of Tarsus called him Sir here in the New World Translation? Did he say, did Jesus say, does the verse say, he said, I am the Sir whom you are persecuting? Huh? Let's, let's, let's grant this, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's grant this, guys and girls. Let's let's grant that they're not, but let's grant that they're right. Okay. Let's just let's just pretend. Uh, let's just make believe. You ever saw? You know, um, what was it? Uh, Mister Rogers. Uh, uh, what make believe? Something like that. When the train used to go through and stuff like that, and he used to. And then they used to talk to King Friday and all that stuff. And, you know, this is what it is. This is this is Ropper Room stuff. This is just the Watchtower Society garbage. This is what this is Ropper Room, Zuma Zoom, Sesame Street. This is what it is. Garbage. I mean, like, this is grant them just for a little while that they're right. And they're not. But let's just pretend. Let's just make this. Let's pretend that we're in. We're all in. Uh, kindergarten and let's just make you know let's make believe and so let's grant that it's sir okay let's just grant you know just for you know a little while you know let them have their little piece of pie you know let them have their pie uh, let's see wh how long it lasts okay let's see now Saul calls Jesus sir Right on page uh, 381 of the New World Translation, 1950. And, uh, and let's say that was the case. Then said, then said, I, um, th and then, then it says, uh, after the sir says, he said, I am Jesus. Even though that was correct, and it's not. But let's see if it was correct. Do you know that Jesus was correcting Saul? If that was the case? He didn't say, I'm the sir that you're persecuting. He said, I am Jesus. He didn't agree with Saul if they were right. That he was saying, sir, as I are, sir, sir, sir. He said, I am Jesus. He was actually correcting them if they, if they had it right. The sir business. 
So that's, I mean, that's a, that's hard. That's how I'm telling you right now. Uh, and, and that's why I put for all of the people who watch my video. Do you know that I did it especially for them? I put the, uh, the series of um, biblical hermeneutics up there by Walter Martin just for them. It, 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 that was a present just for the for everyone. I don't care who. If it's a, a fellow born-again Christian like I am or if it's a, a, a JW. I put that for them primarily. I have to put part four up there and probably by the time you hear this, part four is going to be up there probably. I mean, I don't know how long this is going to be on the internet. You know, if the Lord tarries, this is going to be up there for years, scores of years, centuries, who knows, 5,000 years. I don't know when the Lord is going to come, you know. I'm not going to be, you know, brother camping and giving you a prediction. And let me give you, okay, let me give you the predictions that the Jehovah Witnesses are guilty of false prophecies. Now, I know that some Jehovah Witnesses have probably turned this little channel off, right? When they, because they don't have the stomach for it. But this is the false predictions that they made. Get a load of this. I mean, they're worse than the, than the Mormons. The Mormons gave that Jesus was going to come back uh, on the year or before the year 1891. He never did. Let, let's get it straight. Jesus Christ is going to return, okay? He is going to return wh whether you like it or not. He is going to return, but we don't know the date. We don't know We don't know the date, okay? Let me go to actually, let me see what they say about that. In um, Acts, in the same book, Acts, I, I want to read the New World Translation and see what the Lord Jesus said in the New World Translation, Okay? Now, I never read it before, so I want to see what, what, and I'm going to give you the dates that they, that they set, and that never came to pass, and then I'm just um, turning the, um, the pages over here, so that's why I'm talking a little bit. Um, and it never came to pass, millions upon millions of people left the Watchtower Society in 1975, after, after 1975 came and went. Millions of people. I'm talking about millions, but unfortunately, millions are still there because they don't think for themselves. You know, they have other people think for them. You know, that's the thing about the Watchtower Society. And I'm talking about smart people, young people, middle aged people, old people. I don't care what their age group is. I mean, you know, if, if you see if you see the comments on, on my board on the um, on the debate, of um of uh james white dr james white and um and greg stafford you see that a lot of people make really you know uh striking comments you know so um and so people can think they can think there's no excuse i mean if you're making all those comments you can think for yourself you don't need to watch tara society to think for you now, on page 354 of the New World Translation of 1950, I'm going to go to verse 6, okay? I want to see what the Lord Jesus Christ said about setting dates, okay? This is on page, again, let me keep my finger on verse 6. This is on page 354, okay? And it reads like this. I'm going to read the whole thing without, you know, interrupting it. Uh, chapter 1, verse 6, it says, quote, When now they had assembled, they went to asking him, Master, are you restoring the kingdom to Israel at this time? He said to them, it does not belong to you to get knowledge of the times or seasons which the Father has placed in his own jurisdiction. 
I, I, listen, uh, guys, girls, check this out. This is from the Watchtower Society, okay, Kingdom Hall, 1950. I mean, it's right here in black and white, guys. I don't know why you keep on fighting for a losing cause. Right here. In page 354, and I'm going to get to the dates in a second. Probably you guys know about the dates, but there might be at least one person that doesn't know about the false prophecies that the Watchtower Society did. I mean, there's a whole bunch of dates. I mean, listen, their false prophecies, if you put them up on a page on a wall, it looks like a calendar. I mean, it, it literally looks like a calendar if you put them up on a wall. I'm telling you, it looks like a calendar. I mean, I'm not trying to be funny or anything like that. I mean, maybe I am a little bit, but it looks like a calendar if you put it up. So many dates that they got wrong, and it says right here on page. Listen, I'm not reading this from the King James. I'm not reading this from the NIV. I'm not reading this from any other translation except for themselves. For their own translation, if you can call it that. It's really a distortion. That's what it is. I'm, co I'm quoting Dr. Julius R. Manti, right? That's what I'm saying. And, and he said it was a distortion. I mean, you're talking about a Greek professor of the New Testament, a Greek scholar, for 70 years. They even quote him. The Watchtower and Track Society honor Julius R. Manti. And by the way, I'm going to be putting Julius R. Manti soon on the internet. I'm going to be putting him on with Walter Martin. Is not up there on YouTube. I don't know why that has escaped people putting it up. I just don't understand why it's not up there. I, I type Julius R. Manti and nothing comes up. Nothing. Well, not recently, but you know. About a year ago, it was so sad because nothing came up. Dr. Julius R. Manti, nothing. That's going to stop. He's going to expose, expose the, the, the new translation. He's going to expose it for what it is, a fraud. That's what it is. It's a fake. Now, I'm not saying everything is here is not translated right. But they just hide the things of the deity of Christ and the Trinity and, 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 and all this uh these wonderful doctrines that we have, you know, in the Christian church that comes from the Holy Bible, the Word of God. But let's get back to this because time is running out. Because I don't want it to be too long because, uh, well, I guess I'm going to be dividing this anyway, you know, into little segments, a little morsels so you guys can feed upon. And then you can go with this stuff to the JWs, okay? No more Jehovah Witnesses. JWs. Let's not honor them so much and call them Jehovah Witnesses, people. Let's not do it. It says here on page 354. 350. 354. Do you want me to spell it out, people? 354 says this quote for their New World Translation of 1950. You know, the year of rock and roll. Well, it was five years before that, but this is what it is. Verse 6. When now they had assembled, they went to asking him, Master, are you restoring the kingdom to Israel at this time? He said to them, It does not belong to you to get knowledge of the times or seasons which the Father has placed in his own jurisdiction. Now listen, we can go into the translation and, and pick out and, and pick and choose what's wrong and what's right. I'm not even here to do that. I'm giving them a break. I'm not even here to do that. I'm just here to tell you that your own Watchtower Society said, right? After they set dates and before a final date that they set, 
that they set in the 60s because that 1975 business started in the 60s, okay? They're saying this before the last date they, that, that they set. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Look what it says. Let me, let me pick out a little piece of the verse over here. It says, quote, It does not belong to you to get knowledge eh, of the times, T-I-M-E-S, times, 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 or seasons, S-E-A-S-O-N-S, times or seasons, which the Father, capital F, has placed in his own jurisdiction. So then why did you set dates, Jehovah, so-called witnesses? Why did you set them up? And I'm going to give you the ones that they set. Like I said before, if you, if you plaster them on a wall, it looks like a calendar. That's what it does. 1874 was their first date that they set. Okay, I'm just going to give you the dates without commentary. I mean, this is this is insane. It's ridiculous. I, it just, it's, it's almost disgraceful. It really is. That's not almost disgraceful. It is. 1874, 1914, 1918, 1925, 1941. Then they quit for a little while because they were so off. Then, in the 1960s, they gave the final date, 1975. Nine, I mean, do you want me to give it to you again? This is what you're fighting for? This is the cause that you yeah, want to argue and, and squirm about in the internet and splurt out all your cleverness and all your little, your little sentences on your comments on, on, on YouTube? And this is what you're fighting for, guys? Really? And girls, too. This is what I'm talking to the JWs now. You're fighting for this garbage? Are you fighting for this losing cause? Are you fighting for your rights? You know? You know? It's just like uh, you're, you're like Pink, Pink Floyd or something like that. We don't need no more education. You know? It's like a rebellion. Huh? All we need is another brick in the wall, whatever they sang, and that's what you're doing. You're, sing you're singing for stupidness. That's what you're doing. I mean, I'm sorry. You know, uh, listen. Think for yourselves for a change. Think. You have a wonderful mind that the, that the Lord blessed you with. And you're going to be responsible for your own salvation. And you're going to be held accountable. You, 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 you. You're going to be held accountable. Let's get back to this, because I'm going to get to that, you know, the judgment seat of Christ and all that in, uh, in, other, in other portions of this series. This is, just a, this is just the first part of the series. I mean, I just, this, is, this is delicious. Look at this stuff. I, I'm going to read it again. I mean, this is delicious. <laughs> Absolutely delicious. I mean, the, the New World Translation, right, of the... Christian Greek scriptures, that's what they have it on their little title page. This is what they say, and they supply it sometimes with the most wonderful stuff you ever heard, you know, that we can really use against them. You know, not really against them, but really, because we're, we're not fighting here against people. We're fighting against doctrine, you know, this is what it is. Verse 7, he said to, uh, he said to them, that is Jesus said to them, uh, it does not belong to you to get knowledge of the times or seasons which the Father has placed in his own jurisdiction. So if it's not for you to have that, to set dates in other words, if you don't have any knowledge, if it's not for you to know the times or the seasons, then why do you do it? Why did you do it in 1874? Why did you do it in 1914, 1918, 1925, 1941, and 1975? Why? Why do you do it? Why? Why? Why, why, why? I want to know why. 
And that was from page uh, 354 of their own translation of the Greek scriptures. Because this is what it is. This is like the greatest thing since apple pie. Huh? I mean, uh, this is the, the best thing since sliced bread, this translation, you know. The, you know, this is the greatest stuff in the history of that church, right? Wrong. This is a fraud. This is what it is. And today was the beginning series of what I call taking the kid glo gloves off. I mean, uh, you know, let me let me open up that. I just closed the book, but let me just. <laughs> I have to read it again here, because look at the, the the English that's involved here. Look at the scholarship. I mean, they don't even know how to put their sentences together. They don't even know how to speak. I think they went into you know they were if they were living at the time these five frauds, you know, Fred Franz and his uh, company of Beatles, you know. I mean, I you know, it's like the the British invasion all over again. These five so-called scholars. I mean, that's what it is. You know? It's like they came off a plane from England or something, you know? The British invasion, you know, I you know, I, that's what it is. Let me read from this again, and I'm just going to close the study. Uh, because th we have to see the English. We have to see the scholarship, or the, or the lack of. Now, uh, let me get a chapter 7, chapter 5, chapter 4, chapter 3, chapter 2. I, they, they were probably doing that, you know, when they were waiting for the Lord. You know, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Through, during all these years, I'm just saying that sarcastically, sarcastically because... I'm thumbing down over here the pages, and, and I'm seeing chapter, you know, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stuff like that. That's probably what they were saying when uh, the countdown was going on. 1874, the Lord is going to come. Boom, it comes, and it goes. You know? Watchtower Society. Oh, what a wonderful group of people. What a wonderful, wonderful group of scholars. Then 1914 came. It didn't come, you know, it, you know, the coming didn't come. Oh, but you know something? Um, you know, Jesus came spiritually. They sound like Brother Camping, you know, spiritualizing everything, you know. Probably when they get a toothache, they spiritualize it. When they get a headache, I wonder what they do then. A stomachache is even worse. It's like the little rascals. I got my headache, headache in the stomach or whatever it is. That's what the, that's the clowns that we call the JWs, you know. Those are clowns. And you want to fight for clowns? I don't think so. I don't think so, people. I don't think you should fight for clowns. Setting dates and all this stuff. When the Lord say, yeah, yeah, shedding. Says over here in verse 6. Check out this English. Verse 6, chapter 1 of Acts. A-C-T-S. Acts. Verse 6, it says, When now. Check this out. <laughs> When now, when now they they had assembled, uh, they went to asking him. They went to asking him? What kind of English is that? They went to asking him? What, did these guys complete the second grade? I mean, <laughs> look at this now. This now... Guys and gals, this is on page 354. This is what that is. Page 354, I mean, this stuff is funny. I mean, this stuff is hilarious. I mean, I, scholars. <laughs> Do you know that they didn't even know how to... There was only one person that knew how to, you know, read a little Greek. But... Do you know, I mean, I don't want to get into that because I want to get into that uh, the other time when I want to get into Charles Taze Russell. I want, to, I want to get into your buddy, Charles Taze Russell, the founder of this garbage. Now, I would say before I get to, to that uh, fact is this. Yes, Charles Taze Russell did not invent all the doctrines of the Watchtower Society after... The year 1917, because he died, right, in 1917. So, 
Okay, I can't blame him for everything, but he was the founder. You know? He was the founder. And he made that, uh, you know, they were famous for making that seven-volume set in which he wrote six volumes, you know? And I'm going to get into that. Where he said, this is the buddy that you're fighting for, uh, uh, people. That he said that you didn't need, I'm not going to even say this loud because my neighbors might hear me. That you know you don't that you that you need his writings to 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 give you understanding that if you just read the Bible, I'm gonna say this nice and nice and low. That if you just need the if you just read the Bible, you're gonna fall away from God in a couple of years. I mean, I can't I can't you, that you, you need his writings alongside of the Bible. If you're a scholar, you know that's what he wrote in the in the in the in the in the in the 19th century. You know that's what he wrote. You know I'm not lying, and uh, you don't say it to your people though, huh? Because you want to rake in all their dollar bills. That's what you want to do from Kingdom Hall. That's what you want to do. It's a free country. I can speak up. This stuff has to stop, you know. This, this, this not thinking for yourself and and stuff like that, and depending on kingdom all for what? What are they? What good news did they, are they providing you? What good? You know, you don't have eternal life there. You have to, you know, get proselytes get to get eternal life. You don't even believe in eternal life, not in the biblical sense anyway. But I, that's another thing. I wanted those other. Those are the other topics that I want to speak on uh, when this series continues. God willing, we shall do this and that, says James. So, um, let me just read this English again. We're on page 354 of the New World Translation of 1950. And look at his English. I, I mean, my English, my, my English teacher from college... From the Christian college that I went to, Nyack Theological Seminary. I mean, if, if I use this, I mean, I, 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 check this out. Verse 6. When now they had assembled, they went to asking him, Master, are you restoring the kingdom to Israel at this time, he said to them, it does not belong to you to get knowledge of the times or seasons which the Father has placed in his own jurisdiction. Okay? I mean... This is coming from the horse's mouth. You know, the Watchtower Society. I mean, I have to end here because this is being too long. You know, I wish... I, I could literally keep you up to next week quoting stuff from this book. Uh, it, but I have to end here. Now, you know, I want to say to any of the of the Kingdom Hall members, don't be afraid to think for yourself. Don't be afraid of the Watchtower Society. Don't be afraid of leaving the Watchtower. It's a, it's a losing cause. You're fighting a losing battle. You're bound to lose. You will lose. Be like Ted Dencher. He was a top man in the Watchtower Society for years, for years. Read that book. Um, I have the book over here. Um, let me see if I could find it. I have I have it over here in my library. This is important. I have the book right over here. This is from an ex Jehovah Witness. Okay, this is not just anybody. This is a guy who who fought against the truth more than you can ever do. I mean, this guy was. Okay, this is the title of the book. Why I Left Jehovah's Witnesses, okay? And it's by Ted Dencher. I'm going to spell it out for you. 
T-E-D, you know, Ted, and denture is spelled out D-E-N-C-H-E-R, okay? Why I left Jehovah's Witnesses. Get it. Read it, please, okay? And you're going to see the proof and the documentation, the facts that drew this man to leave a losing cause, which is the Watchtower Society. Check it out. Read it for yourselves. Now, I have another book by some ex-Jehovah Witnesses that uh, is very interesting, too. Okay? It's called Witnesses of Jehovah. Witnesses of Jehovah by a, by a couple. Uh, and their names are Leonard and and Marjorie Cretian. Okay, and uh, Leonard is spelled out L-E-O-N-A-R-D and Mar Mar Margie M-A-R-J-O-R-I-E and Cretian, or the Creridians, if you will, their last name, this is, this is a couple that, what? They were in the Watchtower Society for 20 years. I mean, they served Kingdom Hall with all their vigor, with all their might. They used to argue just like you guys do. And they left. And you know why they I'll tell you why they left. Before, let me get to the, to the last name. C-H-R-E-T-I-E-N. Okay? It's called Witnesses of Jehovah. And I mean, the facts will blow you away why they left. Okay, the deceptions, and you should get the video. I got the video from this dear couple. I mean, it tells you the secrets. It tells you that mansion that uh, that this guy bought saying that it was for, you know, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob lying to the people, uh, the dear people in the Watchtower Society in, in the earlier portion of the 20th century, lying to them, buying the mansion, making it. Uh, making it a place for the uh, the future coming of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob while he was we while he was living there, okay, uh, during the depression, okay, where everybody else was was trying to get morsels of something something to eat. He was there in his new car and in his man. People, don't, the Jehovah Witnesses don't know about that. I'm gonna get into that. Uh, this guy, you know. Buying this mansion, and everybody else in the during the depression was starving to death. Literally, I mean, this is no joke. You know, check out the depression of the 1930s. Okay, and uh, and a lot of portion of uh, I think it was also uh, you know it was 1929 as well that people were suffering. So uh, I got to see whether when that depression started, it doesn't, it doesn't really doesn't make a difference. Uh, you know, I'm going to get into that. And it gets into that. I'll tell you that right now. This book has it. And the video has it. Get the video. Witnesses of Jehovah. Witnesses of Jehovah. And it says over here, subtitle is a shocking ex... Uh, let me show you over here. A shocking expose of... What Jehovah Witnesses really believe. That's the problem that we have, people. Is that there are some junior space cadets out there, right? Junior space cadets of the Watchtower Society. And they don't know what their founding fathers really taught. I'll tell you that right now. If they would know what their founding fathers taught, it would blow them away, literally. They won't even remain in the Watchtower Society for another 10 minutes if they were smart. So, that's another book that you can buy along with, with Ted Denture's book on the Watchtower Society. Huh? Gain them all. And this couple, like I said before, served Jehovah's Witnesses for 20 years. I mean, this is not just a, you know, a mushroom uh, uh, kind of uh, JW that just springs up and is chopped off, you know, 
and then uh, falls out. No, nah, this is this. They were they were serving for most of their adult life at the time. I mean, and you know why they lost, and they, you know why they left. I'm gonna tell you this, and this is gonna be the end of the study. And uh, and I'm gonna be praying for every so-called Jehovah, Jehovah Witness to to see the light. Now, not all of them will see the light, but some of them will. So. My prayers are not going to be in vain. It's not going to be frustrated because God says that his word is not going to come um, back to him void. That's a promise in Isaiah 55. Now, the the Caridians, I like to call them the Caridians, the Cretians, if you will. Well, they, they left the Jehovah Witnesses movement. They left that little hotel of a, of a society, you know. They left that because of, I think, one main reason. They had a lot of reasons, but this was the main reason when they were with Walter Martin explained this. I have a copy of the, of the interview. And it's online also. You can check it out for yourselves. Check it out online. Walter Martin. Go on YouTube and get it. Walter Martin, Jehovah Witnesses or something like that. You, you know, you could just, you know, I don't know the, the, the tags that they used. But like uh, Jehovah Witnesses and Walter Martin or Walter Martin and Jehovah Witnesses. And you're going to find an interview that he did on CRI, the Christian Research Institute, which I love. You know, we all get down on Hank for one book that he wrote, but we don't forget the other. We don't. We forget the other books that he wrote that were great, 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 great. You know, Christianity in Crisis, that Counterfeit Revival. Those are great books. But you know, we take it to too to to too much of an extreme, either to the right or to the left, how we treat people sometimes. But that's another topic. Now. You, you can check that interview out and you're going to find out one main reason why they left the Watchtower Society and with that I close. It was because of their false prophecy of the return of Christ, which he is going to return, but not when the Jehovah Witnesses said. It was because of their false prophecy of 1974, uh, 1975, excuse me, 1975, that false prophecy came and left in, well, the Corinthians, they uh, had a little problem with that, you know. They, but you know why? They thought for themselves. They said, there's something wrong here. They said this date, he didn't come. And now they're not explaining why they set that date and said the things that they did. And I'm telling you right now, they didn't have it. By the grace of God, they thought for themselves. And by the grace of God, God drew them with, cord with cords of love. Right? No one can come to me except the Father who has sent me draw them. You know? You have not chosen me. I have chosen you. And, you know, something... They left the Watchtower Society. It must have been very difficult for them to do that. They spent their, I mean, the majority of their adult lives in that, in that, in that society. And they left. They left. Well, everyone, this is the end of uh, part one of the series. And... Uh, you know, thank you for, for, uh, for, for listening to this study. You know, I have to put some tape on this New World Translation because it's, it's going to fall apart. This thing is so old. This thing is about, this thing is about, what, 63 years old, this book? You know? This is, uh, yeah, I got to put some tape on it. It's falling apart. I mean, it's falling apart, uh, not really literally from the outside or anything like that. It's a hard cover. So, uh, it's a hard cover. And, uh... Just have to tape it up in the inside a little bit, you know, uh, beginning portion of it. So anyway, everybody, um, this is Angelo Quinones coming to you. And I hope that you took the things uh, to heart. I just want to leave you with a verse of scripture, with two verses of scripture, okay? And uh, I don't know, some people maybe turned off the, the, um, the study. 
But you know something, maybe one person went all the way to the end. And I'm telling you, you have to reach the end of my studies because you don't know what God is going to do. You know, um, really, he's the king of king and lord of lords. And um, and the thing is that, um, the, the thing is that, uh, you know, so uh, this is a beautiful thing. I'm going to be reading from Romans chapter 10. And it's a promise to you guys that uh, the Lord made. And the Lord cannot lie. Let God be true and every man a liar. Uh, chapter 3 of Romans. And I'm going to be reading from chapter 10 of the book of Romans. Chapter 10 and beginning with verse uh, 9. That if, and uh, this is from the, this is from the King James Version. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God have raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jews and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call on him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I read from uh, verses 9 all the way. Uh, the last verse that I read was uh, verse 13. So um, that's the end of this study right now um, and uh, for now. And, uh, and so I hope you come back for part two um, where I'm going to further expose the Watchtower Society uh, translation or distortion, which is the New World Translation of 1950. And I hope you come back. Hey. Everyone, stay safe, and thanks for viewing. Bye-bye.